You're listening to the Abolitionist Roundtable, patriotic Black American conservatism, with your hosts, Dell, Phil, and Janice, leading the charge and advancing the 4%. Join in the conversation at 734 822 1600. Good morning. Thank you for staying with us on this wonderful Saturday morning, August 8th, 2015. This is Janice Daniels. I'm with Phil Stargell and Del Marsh, and we represent the Abolitionist Roundtable. We like to bring you issues of constitutional value. We like to bring you issues of Judeo-Christian principled values, where we know that God created all men equal in the eyes of God, and we love that concept, and we love each other, and we have a great time here on the radio with each other. And in fact, this morning, we're going to have a great time interviewing a very important man. His name is Tom McMillan. Tom, are you with us? I am, Jess. Thank you so much for joining us. You know, Tom, I I think you have a a, a long history of being a, a staunch conservative, a great spokesperson for the movement. And I want to just Thank you for all the years of your service that you've given to the community. And here you are now, again, giving more service to the community by advancing the cause of a very interesting presidential candidate named Rand Paul. Can yeah. you tell us a little bit about what you're doing? Well, sure. Um, I am uh, his one of his co-chairs, uh, myself and Chuck Yab are uh, co-chairs for Michigan's uh, grassroots efforts for Rand Paul. And, yeah, I mean, he is a very interesting, he's a very unique uh, Republican. Um, as he mentioned at the, during the, during the um, debate on Thursday evening, he's the only candidate that's actually beating uh, Hillary Clinton in five of the states that Barack Obama won uh, back in 2012. And there's a reason. He has a, a broad appeal. Um, but we can get into that. I don't know if you want to get into that now. But, I, uh, you know, back in 2008, I was a supporter of Huckabee in 2012, Santorum. So I'm a yeah I mean I'm a traditional conservative I used to run the Christian Coalition in Michigan um, yeah I'm but I also uh, I'd love to get into a few of the issues that you know distinguish him from the others. Well, you know what I think is so profoundly important is that he was the only candidate that that spoke of the Constitution, defending right. the Fourth Amendment as the true protector of our right to um, to uh, uh, privacy, quite frankly. Uh, you know, they have all of these right. laws and rules and regulations and amendments, and it makes me crazy because all we need is to follow the Constitution. And my concern is that not any other candidate on that stage came to Rand Paul's defense when Christie was attacking him. But, see, Christie wasn't just attacking Rand Paul. Christie was attacking the Constitution. Well, that's right. And, uh, you know, get a warrant is something. Like, you know, like Rand said, we fought the revolution was sparked and was a, the main, one of the main reasons was because of the Fourth Amendment and, you know, the right to privacy. They didn't like, you know, the, the people from uh, England coming in to their homes unannounced, barging in, looking through their papers. And that's what we have now with the NSA. And you know, these are the issues where I really said, you know, Rand stands out. He's a person that understands the Constitution, understands that you've got to balance can't just give up your liberty for safety and security, and he will add, he will do what I believe uh, our country needs to get back on the right track and really start following the Constitution. Well, that's right, and you know these these uh, moderators uh, at Thursday evenings uh, debates were they were they were so. Um they, they were attacking and they were looking to find controversy. The question was asked of Rand Paul: Why would he blame his own? party for our foreign policy failures. And he answered really well by saying something like, well, only ISIS is responsible for terror and depravity. But the question is, how are we going to defeat them? Mm -hmm. And arming our enemies and funding our enemies, as he pointed out, is not the way to defeat terrorism. Right. And, you know, he, he's just somebody who will question things that Republicans didn't used to question. I mean, whether it's uh, civil asset forfeiture and you know, criminal justice reform, he wades into that issue. Whether it's, you know, foreign policy, he says, look, we've got to put everything on the table. Uh, you know, I, I think uh, regularly we end up giving money, and then five years later we find out that that money got to the groups that we don't like 
where we end up finding the wrong people. And so, you know, I think he's willing to at least say, look, let's put everything on the table and discuss this. Um, you know, he's a supporter of term limits, which uh, is rare, but I, I definitely agree with term limits as well. He's, he, he, you know, he smacks down uh, corporate welfare, which both parties get involved in. You know, he's, he's somebody who I really trust. I don't, he doesn't, he's not in this for accolades. He'll wade into issues that need to be dealt with in order to uphold the Constitution. And really, he just wants to get stuff out of Washington, the size and scope of Washington, and get it back to the states. And that's what I love. I love that that idea. Well, that's absolutely right. And and that sets him just, just heads and shoulders above the rest. But the, we in the narrative in this country just doesn't support constitutional principles. We're all over the, the map on what we need to do to fix things when, in fact, all we need to do is go back to the constitutional right. principles that set this up. Now, I have a kind of a pie-in-the-sky uh, thought, quite frankly, Tom. I'm not in favor of term limits because I believe that good people are then term limited out just like you were. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't like that. Um, I, I think the greatest term limits are an educated populace in the voting, the booth. Uh, uh, but, of course, that, like I say, is kind of pie in the sky because we don't have that educated <clears throat> populace that we need. Well, I do say, I mean, I, I was term limited, but I would never have become a state rep if it weren't for term limits. I see. Um, you know, the power of the incumbency is, is such that, um, you know, I, I don't know. I've seen how things work in Lansing, and I believe they work uh, in, in just magnitudes in Washington and I, I do think the term limits, but at any rate, I mean, I know others disagree. Good people uh, disagree with that, but um, you know, he's got a, he's the, he's got a strong tax plan. He came out with a flat tax. Um, you know, he's strong. Like we know him for the NSA and fighting for our liberties. And and again, I just um, I, I trust the man, and I, I believe that. You know, I think I've seen too many conservatives. They get you know they get into office and they kind of start giving in on their principles. And I just think that he, I believe he wouldn't. I believe he would. Uh, you know, do what he says, and, and, and again, he goes into areas like Detroit, Flint. I was with him in Flint. I was with him, uh, you know, when he was crisscrossing the state a few weeks ago. And, you know, he'll go anywhere, and he'll talk to anyone, and, um, you know, I, I think that he, he's what we need. Yeah, I agree with you. Uh, do you think, Tom, that it was a good idea for him to lash out at Donald Trump, though, it, it, during the campaign? <clears throat> right away, he jumped right. out. Right. Well, you know, I... Rand um, is bold, and I think that it's good to set the ground rules. We're at a Republican debate. Who here is a Republican? And you know who's and, and I think it's I think it was fine. I don't know that um, you know, I, I think that he needed to kind of set the stage. Look, all of us, the nine, nine of us are committed. We don't give to Democrats. We don't give a hundred thousand dollars to Hillary Clinton. We're people that are sol- you know that have principles. But what are your principles? I mean, it's just ridiculous that we're sitting here with a guy, some would say, who, you know, gives a ton of money to both politicians and is admitted that he does it in order to get stuff. Right. Um, you know, I, I I think it was legitimate. I don't know. I mean, you, know, you could always second guess exactly the tone and, and the, the way he did things, but... I think that it's important to kind of lay it all out on the table early on. Well, I do know I really appreciated his answer when he was asked, what will you do to protect Christians from being persecuted? And his answer was, I don't want my marriage or my guns registered in Washington. Well, but not only that, he said that like when they were demanding the, um, you know, their, the, the, the sermons down in Houston, Texas, the mayor was saying, you know, about anti-homosexual uh, bigotry or whatever, and they were you know, he he went down there to Houston, and he fought alongside pastors when that was going on. I mean, he understands that, you know, there's the, the, the tide that's out there is against Christians, and if there is persecution, I believe, and I looked at him face-to-face and asked him this, it's so important to me, I said, if we're being, you know, persecuted uh, for our faith, will you go out there and defend them? And he said, yes, as president, I will. So, and I believe that, I believe him when he says that. <clears throat> yeah, I, I believe him as well. I, I like his honesty. Uh, we have a caller on the line. Now, Tom, I'm not real familiar with the uh, phone system, so I'm <clears throat> hoping I'm not going to hang up on you when, right. I, when I take this call from Gary from Hazel Park. Gary, right. good morning. How are you? Well, good morning. I'm doing just fine. Thanks. Tom, um, are you still I, with us? Yes, hey, I am. Tom. Oh, hey, good. I've, got, I've got a general question, really, <laughs> and it has to do with uh, Kasich and his uh, point about unconditional love. 
yeah. uh, through God. Now, don't you hazard your mortal soul if you uh, cavort with evildoers and people who um, defy God's law? Well, Tom, you want to take a stab at that question? <laughs> well, um, you know, I, I have friends that are in the homosexual, you know, they engage in homosexual activity, and I have friends who have, um, you know, probably divorced uh, who shouldn't have under unbiblical grounds. You know, there's various uh, people that are out there that I, I do believe we're to love everybody. Uh, you know, that's God said even love our enemies. Um, but to promote so, it, to promote it. No, we're supposed no, to hate certainly sin. you wouldn't want to promote it, and uh, and you know, but I don't know. I mean, it, it's <laughs> I'm not speaking for Rand, obviously Rand Paul, but uh, I do think that um, we can show love to to all. But it, yeah, we sort of certainly shouldn't make people feel comfortable uh, when they're you know whatever sin that they're involved in. Yeah, that that that's so true. Uh, well, Gary, who are you supporting in the presidential race? Well, I really like, um, oh, the, the, all the names just flooded through my brain all of a sudden. Um, but the guy in Texas, uh, not not the ex-governor, the other one. The guy in Texas, not the ex-governor. You're talking about Ta- Ted Cruz. <laughs> that's right, Ted Cruz. That's yeah. the guy. <laughs> and and I, I really did like what Huckabee had to say last the other night also. Huckabee is always well, you know, sharp. T- yeah. T- yeah, he is. Tom, I, I wrote an article connecting uh, Ted Cruz and Rand Paul, saying that Rand Paul for president, Ted Cruz for vice president, or vice versa. I think that they would make a dynamic couple. Have you thought about that combination at all, Tom? Well, you know, I mean, um, I have been saying uh, back last year that I'm a, a Rand Paul, Ted Cruz kind of person. So I do think that there are similarities there. Um, the establishment has, I, I think they... Uh, don't like Ted, uh, but I, uh, you know, I, I certainly uh, think that he's a good person, and uh, certainly we would, I think, uh, with Rand Paul as president, he'd probably welcome uh, Ted Cruz. Would be one of the one of his top uh, guys you'd be looking at. So does Ted Cruz, or uh, excuse me, does Rand Paul have any plans for coming into Michigan soon?